When I was principal years ago, I was pulled out of my office one day and I had a conversation with the superintendent and we had talked about me actually starting a brand new role at central office. Now, the thing is that role did not actually exist. It wasn't something that had ever existed, not only in our district, but something we had never heard of in any district at the time. And you hear this thing that we are preparing kids for jobs that don't even exist yet. And there's some truth to that. But are we actually trying to create that within the context of what we've always done? Do we actually create some of those jobs that don't exist in our work? And so the, the role became the division principle of innovative teaching and learning. And at the time, I did not know of any organization that was working with schools that had any focus on innovation. So part of my job was to actually define what does innovation actually mean? What's the, the process? What do we do? And how does this actually improve learning? So as I started to do this, more and more people started asking me about the role, what we're actually doing. And then you see this all over, a, a, a director of innovation, director of innovative teaching and learning. Now I'm not saying we created the job, um, you know, first time ever in education. We might have, I have no clue because I had not known of anyone at the time that actually had a similar position. And I, full credit, my brother, uh, Dr. Alec Kroos, he gave me a suggestion for the title and I really embraced it having no idea what it actually meant. And that's part of the process. We were kind of building the plane in, in the air because we knew we had to do something different. But now you're seeing more and more organizations have that role, have that title, and they're looking at how do we do education differently and better? Because it's not just about doing things different, but really ensuring how do we actually really take advantage of all the opportunities that we have in our world today. And the reason I tell you this is because sometimes what we do is we wait for other organizations to change. We wait for other people to decide when we should start doing new things. But we had said, why not us? Why not actually create something different? And then once it was created, other people started trying to replicate what we were actually doing. That's why I thought about this when I was actually having a conversation with Superintendent John Mertz. He is the superintendent of all of that community schools, which I am blessed to be able to speak to um, in, in the next uh, few weeks. And he talked about really creating something in his community that did not exist. And now that he's created it, more and more people are looking at what he's doing and wanting to actually create it or bring it into their own schools. If you wait for someone else to actually initiate change for you, it's never gonna happen. The change that you create yourself, not only can it be successful, but it might be replicated by other people knowing that this is actually what's best for kids and how do we actually do this in our own context. So John made me think of that story, really great podcast, really wonderful and thoughtful visionary leader. I really hope you're gonna enjoy it. I had a great time talking to John on a Saturday. Um, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Carlos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm so blessed today to have John Mertz. He's a superintendent in all of the community schools uh, in Michigan. I actually will be joining uh, them all in uh, November. And so I'm just really excited to learn more about the community, learn more about some of the stuff that you're doing right now. So John, thanks, thanks by the way, this is a Saturday. You went to a school community, drew on a suit, everything. I love it, making me feel really special. Right, it's like a big deal today. So uh, I just want to say thanks for taking the time out of a Saturday because I know you're super busy, um, you know, doing whatever. Is there actually before we get into it, Michigan State football game today? Is there a Michigan State game? No, that's it's their by by week. So oh, no, that's why. No, no wonder you had Saturday open all of a sudden. You probably looked at the schedule. Otherwise, I would have been saying, "No, dude, you can't make it. <laughs> I'm booked." Uh, I love it. So he actually, John is like lives right in the Michigan State area. So this is I grew up. I heard Magic Johnson fan, uh, Tom Izzo, Mateen Cleaves, right? He was one of my favorites, yeah. uh, one of my favorite guards. So, John, if you could tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do today, how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Well, thanks, George. First of all, thank you so much for having me on here. I'm just thrilled to be talking to you, buddy. Um, I'm actually in my 33rd year in education in Michigan, believe it or not. And I'm the superintendent of an awesome school district, Olivet Community Schools, which is about 35 minutes south of Lansing. We have about 1,250 kids in our district, four buildings, and we have just 
an amazing staff. It's a great community. I am so blessed to be a part of this community. I've been in, um, I've really only worked in two other school districts. My first one, when I started Pelston, Icebox of the Nation. And um, <laughs> that, that was their big thing, by the way. Every day I drove into work, it's like, welcome to Pelston, Icebox of the Nation. But anyway, so I've been, um, I've been in education a long time, a lot of different administrative jobs, but mm. being a superintendent and all of that, I think is really my jam. It's, it's for me, it's just a smaller community opportunity to connect with kids, great people. And so we, we have a lot going in our district and we're really excited for the future. Well, and that, you know, you were talking about that before we got on the podcast, there is a real community feel um, in the work that, you, that you're doing. I, I grew up in a really, I, I once, you know, it's funny because I don't say a small town because it was actually where I grew up in Canada. Uh, it was, it could have been a city because of the population, but it wasn't. We we held on. I think they turned into a city maybe, you know, the last couple of decades. Um, but there's only 5,000 people. And like to think that's a city in Canada shows you how small it is. But school was really central to community, right? Like school and community were synonyms when I was a kid. Like that was really important. So like, how, why, like, why do you say that? Why do you say like that there's that community connection? Like, why, how do you see that in, in all of that? Like, why is that so important to you? Well, I, I think a really good example of it is today. Like you said, dude, it's a Saturday. So mm -hmm. I'm pulling in here this morning. The whole parking lot's full. You've got youth activities going on in the stadium. They're having like a craft show in the yeah. in the, one of the gyms here today. It's just the, the school district is just kind of a central part of our community. I mean, we've got a college in our town, actually, the University of Olivet, Um but really, it's kind of the school district. The school district's a big employer in, in this area. The school district's um, huge for the people. Most of the people that live here went to school here. Other than the fact we've got a ton of kids coming in from other school districts that choose all of that. It's, it's just an amazing place to be, the culture, the, the, the sense of caring and everything. Yeah, and so, like, so I know that you know, it's a, a smaller community. You all know each other. Uh, one of the things that can easily happen is that, hey, we grew up here. We don't want anything to change. We don't want anything to change. We like how it is. Don't, don't well, we got a new superintendent coming in. Don't make us change anything. But I, I know you and I were talking, your staff has really embraced some like new ideas, really kind of some really thoughtful opportunities. What are some of the things that, you know, since you've been there, have, have you seen progression in your district and really kind of embracing some things that, that are, are new? Well, one of the things that we've done that um, is, is really, okay, this isn't probably something I'd, I'd put on an advertisement or anything, is, is like school safety. I mean, yeah. that's been a huge thing for us that we've really taken to heart and done a lot yeah. with. You know, I didn't, I didn't go into, into education to be like a safety director or a coordinator, but that, you know, when I got here, we had this camera system. It was 12 years old. You'd look at the cameras and it's like, is that Bigfoot that just walked across the parking lot or what was that? <laughs> and so we've done a lot. We're, we're actually one of the leaders in this area and around the state in school safety and security. We've got a state-of-the-art camera system, access control. We got a grant for weapon detection software. So I think one of the first things when I got here was taking care of the things that you don't see as much, mm -hmm. you know, the things that are important on the backside. Now we've really started to dive into the curriculum and um, looking at professional development and things for staff that we need to do, because I think, you know, our district before, long before I got here, I'm not going to take credit for it, has always been a leader in the area academically, but, you know, coming out of COVID with, you know, kids yeah. with learning loss and different things. We put together a strategic plan. And I, when I say we, I mean, we, mm -hmm. this huge committee, and we've got three goals in our strategic plan. And one, we're focusing on instructional improvement and innovation. Mm -hmm. And the second one is social emotional learning. And the third is real world learning, color and college and career readiness. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of driving everything we've been doing for the past few years. And, and you can really see that like, okay, so we're having a huge fall conference and we're having you come in. In the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll, where does this fit in the strategic plan? Instructional okay. improvement and innovation, professional learning for staff. So that's just been a huge thing for us the past few years. Well, my hope is that when, I, when I'm there and I know you have other people joining that day as well, is that I hit on all three of those things. So I think those are obviously very important to not only your work, but my work as well. I will also 
uh, being a big guy, I'll probably wear like a big jacket, you know, walk a little hunched over. So I'll see if I can get capture like a, if I'm looking like a, you know, big hairy Greek guy. So maybe like get mixed up for Bigfoot with your new camera, see if you can, if you can identify me. <laughs> Cause I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, sure. I'm pretty, I'm pretty Bigfoot like, so just give me a heads up. If I, if you see something on the camera, you're freaked out. You know, that's our speaker for the day. So I, uh, I, uh, well, you definitely look a lot different than you did a few years back. I, yeah, together, that's for sure. I agree. I agree. I'm good. And I'm good. Not with, in a bad way though, dude. Not in yeah, a bad way. The, the other way. Right. So, Hey, this, this day, this is actually, um, quite unique. I know that you've been kind of building this event, um, for the last few years and, and really kind of are leading. I know there's another school district, many of their staff are joining, um, on that day. Like wh why did, why even put this together? Like what was your vision? to kind of bring this together. And I shouldn't say, and I, you know, I'm actually correcting myself. I know it's not your vision. It's, you know, what was your team's vision? Because, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning more and more about you. That it's not something that John does on their own, but it's really kind of like how you do this together. Like what was the vision for um, doing this and bringing people together in, in, in a smaller community? Cause typically, you know, this is, it's not like a, you know, thousands and thousands of staff members, it's a smaller community, but you're creating such a really amazing experience for, for your staff and for the surrounding communities. Well, at Bayernick ISD, where I worked prior to coming here, we did the same thing. We had a fall conference every year, and and it got really big. I mean, we started, it was in a high school, then we were using two schools, and we've mm -hmm. got, you know, 100 presenters and, and 12, 1,500 people coming, and, and it was really huge. And then I got here, and I kind of looked at some things, you know, we were doing and everything, and I think our, our kind of take on the whole thing was, why not Olivet? Right. Why not have, um, you know, George Kuros or Kevin Honeycutt, George Sanfilippo in last year? Why not have these great people in to work with our staff? Because we've we've got a top notch staff. We've got an amazing staff and we want to provide high quality support to them, you know, as well as our kids. So I think that was really our driving force is, hey, we're going to go do this. We may be a small district. We're going to go do this on our own and we're going to bring in some some amazing people to work with our staff because they deserve nothing less. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of been the focus of it. And it's small right now, small in terms of, you know, different from what we've done before, but building up every year, next year within our ISD, everybody's going to have the same uh, common PD day. So I think there's an opportunity to continue to grow this, but it, it was just, why not? This is what we need. We're going to go do it. You know, th this is and this is the embodiment of something I've been talking about for a, a long time. This notion of kind of innovating inside the box. So you have a constraint of whatever constraints that you you deal with, and a lot of people say like, what, like we can't really do anything because you know this is the tradition here. This is what we've always done. This is the expectation from the state, from the school district, whatever. And my thing is like, of course, you have to check off the boxes. You got to check off that. That is reality. You got to do this. But what you want to do is within the box, how do you actually innovate, create something really compelling where then other people say like, why are we not doing that too? And um, I, I was actually just talking to a very good friend of mine, Justin Terry, he's superintendent in a, a Forney ISD in Texas. And some of the stuff I've actually, I, as I'm listening to you, I, I need to connect you to, cause he like, they built just this new structure. It's called the OC, it's really powerful. And his mentality is similar to what you're talking about is saying like, wh why not us? Why can't we do this? And then, and then you actually get people from the state, you know, from your community starting saying like, yeah, let's replicate that. And then the, and then the box starts to change. And I think that's the powerful part of it is that you, you, if you're waiting for other people to do that for you, it's never going to happen. Right. It's, you got to kind of do that yourself. So this is a very personal question for me. Uh, and it was going to kind of put me on the spot. So I'm going to be there that day. I feel a lot of pressure based on <laughs> how awesome your district is compared to what, like, from what you've already told me, like, what is your hope for me that day? Like, what do you, if I'm successful, what does that look like to you? I think if you're going to be successful that day, the first thing is you got to be walking in with some cool shoes. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know what kind of shoes you're going to be wearing, right, dude, okay. but, but you got to have, you got up the shoe game. All right. You no, know, I think, I think for us, George, you know, we're, um, we're really looking at right now kind of a, a big focus for us is getting that message out there about our school district. I mean, our parents know we have a great district. Our kids know they go to great, a great school district. Our staff knows they work at a great place. But we want the person that graduated 15 years ago that doesn't have kids here or that, right. 
you know, or the community member, we want people to know about our district and what makes us so special. And I've been trying to communicate that message with our staff. We need to share the great things we're doing. And it doesn't matter if you're on your own personal Twitter or X or whatever right. they're calling it today, or if you're, or if you're standing in the grocery store telling somebody, Hey, I did this really th cool, you know, thing in, in school today with, with, with my class, or if you're doing a presentation, doesn't matter what the medium is, but we need to communicate to people the amazing things that are happening each and every day in our school district. And so I've tried to hit that message home with people Joe Sanfilippo was here last year. He was amazing. He kind of helped us with that. As a matter of fact, we've got like hashtag Olivet Eagle mini basketballs and footballs and everything, kind of like George or kind of like Joe did. I'm sorry, with the go crickets. Yeah. But for me that day, I, I really gravitated to having you come in because I wanted to see them have someone come in from the outside, never been here before, completely unique perspective, but yet their message kind of resonates with what they've been hearing from me all along and what they've been hearing from our administrative teams and the things that we've been doing. So I think, you know, that's really it for me in terms of a, a, a successful day for you is you're kind of talking the same language we are. So they're hearing, here's this guy that goes all over the United States, all over the world and speaks. He gets us and this is, yeah. and he gets where we're trying to go as opposed to, you know, like a canned, well, you know, I think, you know, this quote is you've got to do this. And yeah. Well, and that, you know, and that, that to me is, is really important on those days is that I, I think it's always good to challenge people, you know, get them to think a little bit differently. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a big advocate of you, you do need to bring people from the outside in, in some capacity to maybe bring in a, some, some different thinking. But really, and I know that you do this really, really well, and you, you, you talked about your community really well. It's also important to develop the leadership within so that they're sharing, you know, the incredible things that are happening in their school, uh, in their classrooms too, because some districts, everything they do is so focused on the internal, and then you're, you, can, you can kind of get stale. And then some districts, it's all about bringing in other voices, bringing in new administrators from outside, and then you don't, and then people don't have anything to aspire to. They're like, well, we'll never, you know, we'll never have anything to, to actually great because we're always looking at the outsider. So I think that balance is really important. But my goal is always is to really kind of understand who you are, make sure people feel challenged in what they're doing, but really reaffirm that they're already on a good path. And so I know with you at the helm and with your incredible team, I'm pumped to be there now. And I got. Yeah, I don't know. What, I'm like, I don't know what shoes. Maybe I'm gonna like swap them in the middle of my talk, right? So like, really kind of throw it off. So I can't. I can't wait. Well, I was to... going back and I was going Go back ahead. and forth between the Van Halen 5150 shoes, <laughs> wearing those, and like the Kyrie Four um, <laughs> Lucky Charms. So that'll be your competition. I have met my shoe match today. I didn't realize this. But now, now it's on, man. It's on. So I can't wait to see you, your community, and work with you that day. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I hope uh, they get a chance to listen to this. So uh, I, make sure you come say hi. If you, if you watch this to the end, let me know when, you, when I get there. I'll see, we'll see how many people watch this. So, John, thanks so much for taking time out of your Saturday. I really appreciate you. Can't wait to see you all. I hope you all have a, a wonderful day. Thank you so much, George. We're really looking forward to having you here, buddy. Thanks, my friend.